Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we are going to do a garden tour on this bright and sunny Sunday. Alright guys, for those of you guys that are new to my channel, I'm Tiffany and I garden in zone 9B in the Arizona desert in the city. So for those of you guys that don't know, if you are in the desert, you can have a beautiful garden during the winter. So that is why I'm doing garden tours in the middle of December. So I'm excited, excited to show you guys what's going on. I'm wearing a sweater because it's cold. All my garden tours from now on are gonna be in the middle of the afternoon, so sorry if it's a little bright, but it's cold, and I'm a desert creature, and I don't like cold. So, yeah, let's just, ah, uh, there's so much, guys. So much to show you guys. Before we get started, guys, Frank is back. <laughs> he went away for a little bit. I don't know if it got too cold for him, but he is back, so that's exciting. I thought he was gone. <laughs> now, for my herb bed guys we're gonna start up front because yeah look at all of this garden right now everything is just so beautiful and so big it's starting to get really big but in front we have the curry tree now I had wanted to up pot the curry tree but I think it's too late for me to do that because you don't want to unpot it when it's cold so this is gonna be the curry trees pot but I am gonna do something with this um, from now until the spring so that then I can use this pot. But in here we have some garlic chives, we have some sweet marjoram, some oregano, some parsley that needs to be picked, some curly parsley. The lovage is starting to grow back out. Remember guys, we cut this thing all the way back. We have some sage back here, some lemon thyme, some basil. This one's a Thai basil, not a regular basil. And then we have a dill right here. And then it's funny because right here, I always forget this, but we have a little a little time that I had started inside and thought it was dead and I put it right there and then it just kind of started living again. Come out during the afternoon because just like that, it's warm again <laughs> and I can, you know, function like a regular person. I feel sometimes like I'm like Frank where I just wanna lay on a rock and like absorb all the, the heat before I start moving. <laughs> All right guys, so this week is gonna be a busy week because we are gonna finally figure out a place where we're gonna put all these onions and all of these leeks. So I've been thinking about it. I think I got some ideas, but we're gonna figure it out. But in the meantime, we have some kale and some celery. The celery is one thing that I wanna start um, pulling because these celery stalks are looking pretty good. I've got some decent ones in here. And also I want to um, start dehydrating these leaves because I'm running out of celery powder in the house. Now guys, if you haven't made your own celery salt, you are missing out on one of life's beauties. <laughs> and if you haven't eaten celery at a young age, you are also missing out on one of life's beauties. I used to hate the taste of celery, but I'd only had store-bought celery. It wasn't until I grew my own celery at home, picked it at a young, tender age, and ate it that I was like, okay, this is something I can work with. So this bed is doing quite nice. We don't cover it or anything like that. It's just that all the bugs are, for the most part, sleeping. We do have a little bit awake, but they're pr pretty much sleeping. So we have some collard greens here. Now in between all of the rows, I have onions. So all of these things right here are all bulbing onions. Um, I'm pretty sure they're a white onion or a sweet onion, one of those. Now this is the green I wanted to grow a lot of. This one is the curly mustard. This thing is the hardest thing to germinate. And so I only got one and then I thought, okay, I'll just put in some more collards because this is taking forever to germinate. And then look at here, guys, it germinated. <laughs> so months later. So we're just gonna let it all grow, see what happens. You know, what's the worst that can happen? So then we have some more collard greens. Um, this one looks like a curly mustard, but I'm not sure. So it might be, that one might be a curly mustard too. Now I do need to come in here and harvest some stuff because yeah, everything's looking like a jumbled mess, but we have some nice little turnip greens coming in here. I wonder if the turnips have started bulbing yet. 
mm, I don't fill them so I'm gonna still let those grow um, we have some carrots right here in between and then we have some more celery there another kel here and then we start the process all over again with some more carrots also we have some Swiss chard guys I forgot I planted Swiss chard and I planted some seeds or like little bitty starts that I had started inside that I didn't think were gonna grow but yeah they ended up growing and I can't wait for that I love Swiss chard we have some more um, collard greens here because, you know, your supply of collard greens. And then we have our radishes. Time for another picking of radishes. Can't wait for that. And then another big thing is celery. These celeries are a lot bigger because they get a lot of sun. So look at these. Look at that stock, guys. That is nice. And then we have some more kale there, more onions. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull all of these um, green beans because I do have green beans that are coming up on that side, which I will show you guys. So I'm gonna come over here while there's still a little bit of shade, but I should have started those green beans, guys, back in September before we went on vacation, but I did not. I started them after we came back, which was closer to October 1st, and they just did not get a good start. Um, I didn't finish building that bed out until well, my friend's husband built it while we were on vacation, and then I added the seeds in there probably like early, mid-October. I, I don't know. Whatever it was, it was too late. So we're going to see if we can get these green beans through December and through January. If they can get through December, then I can probably harvest a couple before it gets really cold at the end of January. So we're gonna see. I've never done that before. Normally I have all my green beans by November and then it's done, I'm planting something else, but we're gonna see what happens. Now guys, this week we are filling up all the Dollar Tree pots. I have some stuff started in the house. I have a couple of spinaches that I found and purchased. So we are gonna fill up the rest of these and any holes that, that um, it has. So we have some rosemary here, which guys, I am going to make a um, hair rinse with the rosemary and with the curry. I'm either gonna make a hair rinse or oil. I haven't decided yet, but those two are gonna be coming in the house and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. And then also we have the portabella um, peppers, which are looking really, really good. Still got some good growth on there. They're starting to put out some new flowers, which means covering them is working because it's allowing them to continue to grow. So that's really nice. We have our tomatoes. Look at those Roma tomatoes coming in. Winter tomatoes. Here we go. We have lettuces and um, spinach is the towers in here. I will be adding some more spinach up here. I need more spinach because as you guys know, spinach grows pretty low to the ground and a couple leaves at a time so they're perfect for these Dollar Tree bins but you need a couple rows of spinach to get like a good harvest because you know you can have like 12 pounds of spinach and it'll equal like two tablespoons and then this is the uh, um, Tabasco pepper which I never feel like the pots big enough guys I feel like this thing needs just something bigger to live in because these leaves are just yellowing and then we have another rosemary over here. So I feel like the helicopters, I don't know if you guys can hear them, I will know later on in this video, but I feel like the helicopters are just going back and forth and back and forth. They're probably currently training, but let me show you zone three. It is my summer zone as I am calling it, and it is full of all the summer veg and herbs. So let's go look at it. So guys, if I don't have the energy to come out and cover anything, I just come out and cover this one, this one zone right here, because this is all the summer things that I know if I get them through, they are going to be amazing in the spring and probably even late um, winter. So we have some sweet Marconi peppers that are really starting to grow up. Those ones I started from seeds and these ones will be ready by the spring. We have some Italian sweet peppers. Look at the size of this pepper guys. This thing is absolutely, let's turn here. There we go. That thing's absolutely huge. It's huge. And then we have some more coming along here. This one is growing a lot more peppers, so I'm excited about that. We have a Roma tomato up here. We have some Serrano peppers that, yeah, these are ones that I had grown from seed. Thought they were dead. Glad I didn't just chuck them because yeah, look at those peppers growing on them. We have some mint. This one is a regular peppermint. We have some thyme. I wanna say this is 
No, yep, that's regular time. I just smelt it. <laughs> but I thought it was a lemon time. It's a regular time. We have our chocolate mint, which is absolutely amazing. This one is a different type of oregano. I'm excited to mix the two of them and see which, like, see how that blend turns out. I think one's like an Italian and one's like a Greek um, oregano. And then we have an eggplant, which look at this, guys. I didn't even see this before. You see that big eggplant on there? Looks like we're getting another little bit of a roast. Now, this basil is coming out um, tomorrow when I do a garden harvest. Um, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna taste it and see if I can still use this basil and dry it. But I need this pot for a big project that I have coming up and you guys will see that in another video. We have some more Serranos growing on this guy, which is nice. This is where I was saying I had some Kentucky Wonders growing. So they're growing in nicely. There's no damage to them, no insect damage, no nothing. So we will see. And then this basil is going to get a big chop too because I want to dehydrate it and get that in the um, jars. So we have some broccoli going in here. We're moving out to our bigger vegetables. Look at how pretty the... Uh, uh, Malabar spinach looks guys when it starts to flower. Isn't that gorgeous? I think it adds so much beauty to my garden All right guys, we're moving out to my favorite spot to sit which is here by the lemongrass because it smells so amazing So I have two recipes coming up for you guys. One is including this lemongrass It's gonna be at my sleepy time chicken soup It's made with lemongrass and lemon balm and some other things and then I also have something coming up with the Chinese cabbage um, it's gonna be a ginger beef noodle dish um, that, yeah, I just realized after cutting back the tomatoes, we have a lot of cabbage that I could potentially use. So here are the big beef steak tomatoes. They are doing really nicely after getting their big trim and they're starting to actually put on flowers now. So that is what we were going for. That's what we wanted and now that's what's happening. Now see below them guys, we have the three Chinese cabbages that are doing really nicely. And I start to pick my cabbage at a young age when it's like this because these get prickly when they get bigger. So you'll be a stab in your fingers. And then in front of it, we have some um, bush beans. Once again, very surprised that I have bush beans right now. They are flowering and starting to put off beans, but we will see how that goes. <laughs> and then right in front of that, this is where I always grow extra celery. This is always my last celery to be taken out during the summer. Um, this little spot really keeps it safe during the heat. All right guys, so now moving over to zone five, which I cleaned up a lot of. We do have some space now for the cilantro to go in, but on the back row, we have one broccoli and then two Brussels sprouts, which continue growing really slow. I might give up on Brussels sprouts, I don't know. And then we have some more broccoli right in front of it. And then just lined in here, we have some turnips and some um, radishes and then one curly parsley right here. And then up above it, we have the uh, spearmint and then we also have the mojito mint. Now, the difference between mojito mint guys is that look at how big these leaves are. And these, this thing grows really, really big and you know, it's perfect for mojitos. And then in the very back over there, we have some garlic that is looking a little interesting, <laughs> but we will see how it goes. I need to plant the rest of the garlic still. And I started taking down this big um, butternut. I do need to get the rest of it that's over here. I had to empty out a trash can. I think I'm going to try the trash can idea right now for making the compost, and then we'll go from there. It's crazy to think that one, I still have a roselle that still looks halfway decent. And two, behind there, there's more greens. Now guys, this roselle, I'm surprised it's still here once again. Um, I'm trying to get it to make seed. It's not doing it so far. So far it's just giving me calyxes and then the calyxes are like not staying on there. Sometimes they're falling off. So hopefully it gives me seed this year. If it does, I will share with you guys. Um, if not, I'll just share with you guys next year when it has seeds but either way it goes we're getting a lot of little see just like that they just fall off we're getting a lot of calyxes and I'm really excited about that because it will give me tea now we have our another Roma tomato right here I've been saying I was gonna move it all this time and then finally the roselle is dropping off enough leaves to where it's giving it plenty of Sun 
Now back in here is where everything is hiding. <laughs> so we have some um, more collard greens. Now I, once again, your supply of collard greens guys, I'm making it happen. So you're gonna see them all over the place. We have some celery here. Um, these ones are a little bit baby celeries. And then look at these, our greens are surviving. Or no, sorry, these ones are cilantro, I believe. They're either cilantro or chervel, I don't remember. And then back there we have some more, that one is a Chinese celery right there. And over here, I'm probably gonna need to thin it, but yeah, we'll see how that grows. I've never had it. And then we're trying to grow some giant mustards in between those ones. So you guys wanna know a fun fact? Did you know that you can take a calyx and just eat it? Mm. It has a burst of lemon taste to it. You can do this while it's like this, and you can do it while it's dried. But here's a fun fact that sometimes happens is a difference between men and women. Women, typically, it just makes you feel calm, and if you're having a stressful day, you can eat one and it'll kind of bring a little bit of calm to your day and help you sleep. Sometimes with men, doesn't happen to all men, but it does happen sometimes to men, they can get a psychedelic effect and feel really high. <laughs> so be careful when you're giving Roselle to your little boys. Now guys, we have Project Save a Beefsteak Tomato. <laughs> the other one died. I either that or I didn't give it enough time, but I just pulled it out. And then this one, it's doing good. Look at that. Look at all these new leaves on here. I'm going to let all the new growth come in. All of the aphids have stopped crawling on it because they realized it wasn't a pumpkin. And so it's just doing its own little thing, growing lots of new leaves, and we're just going to let it continue to grow. I am going to start covering this one. I keep forgetting to cover it, but I am going to start covering it so that then it can last a little bit longer. And then look at how pretty these came in. See, all they needed was a little bit of sun. These are the calendulas. I feel like the fun part of filming a video right now is finding a spot where I, you guys can see me <laughs> in the camera. Because since I am a chocolate girl, then I am really getting like, like shadowed out in the sun. But we're almost done. Now over here we have another Brussels sprout that a um, grasshopper actually likes to live on. And then we have our ma mulberry, <laughs> I almost forgot the name. We have our mulberry tree starting to go dormant. We have our big pot of tomatoes. Look at how beautiful this is. This one are, it's two Roma tomatoes and then there are some radishes in between, like in front of it. But look at the tomatoes coming on here guys is so gorgeous and then we have all of these new tomatoes now you want to make sure that you cover your tomatoes especially while they're fruiting because you don't want them to get any damage and then back over here we have our lime tree the lime tree is starting to give me all of its leaves for mulch so thank you to the lime tree and it's gonna go dormant too now in front here I do want to take out this squash plant um, I do have plans for that pot too we have our stevia that is doing pretty well, but it looks like one of them, yep, this one right here, suffered some cold damage. So we're just, we'll just take this one out, let the other two grow. And then we have some broccoli here, here, and here. And then a potato right there. That one's a russet potato. And then we have our lemon balm, which that's what I'm going to use for the chicken, um, the sleepy time chicken. I'll use that one. And then also we have some regular thyme. For some reason, I think I used too much of this thyme earlier on because it's pretty stunted. And then look at how pretty these flowers are in front of it, guys. So guys, we love thyme, and I feel like that poor little thyme got like the bulk of it because it was the only thyme like pretty much like available at the time when we were starting to cook. And yeah, it got, it got eaten a lot. But I just noticed something, guys. Let me show you. So guys, I was sitting across from this and I just noticed this. This is a chamomile that died back after it flowered. I thought the whole thing was done and I've just, you know, we've always continued to water things because we do have worms that live in our pots. And look at this, it grew back another chamomile. That's so exciting. That's so funny because I actually uh, had started some chamomile in the house and it died. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try putting chamomile in a bigger pot. So I actually bought a start and 
now I'm gonna have two chamomiles. That's really exciting. I'm gonna probably throw some chamomile seeds in there. I have a hard time germinating seeds, but I think I'm gonna throw some in that pot so maybe we can get um, a bigger, a bigger flushing of chamomile. And then I'm gonna try chamomile in a bigger pot and see what happens. So, guys, it's funny. It's funny how medicinal plants work because I'm like, oh, I'm so calm now. I just wanna go to sleep. <laughs> And then I was like, why do I feel that way? And then I remembered that I took a bite of the Roselle cow. Okay, I did not take a nap, <laughs> but my phone just filled up with space. But yes, I just the little bit that I tasted, just to show you guys that you know you could eat it right off of the tree, was enough to like calm me down and just make me like, hmm, I want to take a nap. <laughs> so, but do be careful if you guys once again are giving it to your husbands or your boys, because you never know if that happens. And then also, if you are pregnant, do not eat Roselle, so or drink Roselle tea. So yeah, I did a whole video about Roselle, so make sure you guys watch that. All right, let's see the last bit of the garden tour. And we have the beautiful banana. <laughs> it is doing good and still putting off leaves. So the winter is not bothering her. She is just doing her own little thing. We have a couple more bush beans that we're down to now three bush beans that want to survive and we're okay with that. We have some lettuce and I think I'm gonna put some more spinach down there. And then we have some collard greens. We have some more calendulas. And these ones were onion chives, but I don't know. They never got any bigger than that. I probably should have put more chives in there. And then we have a couple calendulas that I might be pulling and putting some other stuff in their place, but they're doing good. And then over here we have some more um, collard greens, because once again, your supply of collard greens. And then finally we have our flowers, which are doing good, except for those three. I don't know what happened there. Me and flowers, guys. And we have a um, olive vera that this is the wrong type of olive vera, guys. This isn't. This is the olive vera that's more so the cactus, and we want the olive vera that is the medicinal plant. So we're gonna redo this one. Now I do have an olive vera that is up front in the front of our house that I use that one medicinally um, for cuts burns sunburn mr benson drives an open jeep so he tends to get sunburn every summer so i put that on it and then also i'm going to be making an olive vera oil because it's really good at detangling my hair i have 4c curly hair that is like out to here so it is really nice to have something that detangles it so well and olive vera detangles it perfectly like you put it on there and then you're just like rubbing your finger running your fingers through it within like seconds later so I saw a recipe for olive olive vera oil for my hair so I think I want to try that maybe do an olive vera um, curry because curry is really good for your hair too if you guys have not used curry oil or curry or curry like tea in your hair as a rinse or as an oil really really good for it it'll help um, help you grow your hair out if, you're, if that's what you're wanting to do and so I'm gonna probably make an oil with those two, maybe a little bit of rosemary too, and then just make a whole beautiful smelling oil. Let's just, let's be real. I'm gonna be experimenting because it's gonna smell great. But anyways, I'll show you guys that in an upcoming video. But if you have not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you please do. If you guys are on the live chat, thank you for joining me. And I hope that everybody has an amazing rest of their day and week. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.